we are. We're live on Facebook. Yay. <laughs> So, always a little bit nervous at that point. So, um, hello everybody and welcome to the third episode of A Cuppa with the Converse School. And today we are going to be talking about whether or not you should find out the sex of your baby. So obviously it's a really personal decision, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, but it seems like there's a large amount of people in this country who do find out the sex of their babies. It's just an interesting topic to explore. So my name's Liz Stamford and I am the manager of the Calm Birth School. And joining me today to help me discuss this topic is the lovely Hayley Begner. So Hayley is a, <laughs> a Calm Birth School instructor. Uh, she's the founder of Gigi and Pickle Hypnobirthing. Mum to three, what two? two. And one on the way, yeah, one on the way. Yeah. So two boys, Rory and Huxley, yeah. and 21 weeks pregnant with this current baby. So, yeah. how are you today, then, Hayley? Yeah. All good. All good. good. Now the sun is. Uh, how is your pregnancy treating you generally? Are you feeling well? I've been, yeah, do you know what, the first month or so, um, I, thank you, <laughs> just been putting a, a coffee, we're live, oh, we're live. <laughs> good timing, um, the first month I felt awful, yeah. I felt really awful, um, oh. was that morning sickness and, yeah, or... just, but I just, you know, I wasn't actually sick, it's just that constant, it's like a constant hangover, isn't it? Like the nausea. Yeah. And, and I think you forget every time. No, you do, don't you? You just think it's going to be, it's, yeah, you just think you're going to feel normal, but you don't. You feel yeah. ridiculously ill. So and you just think, oh, it, you know, it wasn't that bad. But then when yeah. you're in it, like I was like debilitated for like three weeks, it felt like, and... Oh no, yeah, that's really hard when you've already got two kids, definitely. Yeah. And last week we were talking all about morning sickness and the impact that that can have on, on your pregnancy. And it's definitely really, really tough. Um, yeah. Oh, Cheryl's watching. Hi, Cheryl, morning. <laughs> um, so did you find out the sex of your first two children? No. No, you I, went didn't for find out. I didn't find out and it didn't even occur to me to, to find out, um, especially not with my first one. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just, I, and I think actually, and, and this is completely, I've just made this up a little bit, but <laughs> I just feel like it's more of, even like six years ago when I had Rory, it wasn't really that as common to find out, I feel like. I feel like, and I guess it's like back in the day, like our parents' generation um, didn't. Yeah, um, we so didn't I think, did we really? So I think I was just of that mindset as well, that mm. no, why would I, why would I find out? Um, it, it was, it, it what didn't even occur to me. And then with Huxley, I didn't find out either. Um, and again, I just assumed that we wouldn't find out because to me, why would I? No. Because I wasn't bothered either way. Um, and then afterwards, Johnny did say, so my husband did say, well, I kind of wish that we had find, like there is a part of me that wishes that we had found out. Yeah. Um, and he felt that it might have really, not really, but changed how he felt like how he bonded with Huxley when he was in my tummy. Okay. Yeah, but I know, you know, in the long run, that mm. when Huxley came out, it, there, and in Johnny's own words, there was an instant chemical and emotional connection that he had to, the ba to his baby. Oh, wow. Um, so in, in the in that moment it didn't it didn't matter at all yeah. it, didn't, it didn't matter but maybe he just means to feel like he was more connected with the baby inside my tummy maybe that's yeah. what he means. I think we don't we probably don't um 
pay enough attention to how the dads feel yeah. in that situation. Um, and, and, and absolutely, we're carrying the baby. So we, you know, we usually will feel that kind of connection. But for the dads, yeah, I can definitely understand why they might think, oh, it would be, it would be better to know so they can maybe feel like they're getting to know the baby a little bit more and thinking about the kind of things that they would, you know, the kind of relationship that they'd ha they would have and everything. Yeah. Do you think it's an element of the reason why so many people now find out what what the sex of their baby is do you think that there's an element of impatience because we're now in this kind of really fast-paced digital well you know where we're all scrolling on insta and we're on facebook all the time and we just we don't have the patience to wait yeah i do think there is an element of that um yeah i think people just want everything like yesterday a little bit without sounding judgmental because i am you know, self-confessed, um, you know, Instagram, yeah. Facebook yeah. addict. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, people, I think people place a lot of importance, don't they, on like colours and stuff. Whereas yeah. I, I don't, I'm not a particularly like pink or blue person. Um, I actually really don't like like loads of pink girly stuff, for example, or like loads of like really like garish boy stuff. So mm. like, and I would be happy if myself and the rest of my family were dressed in grey and black forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just not, I'm just not that a colourful person. So for me, it would never occur to me that, oh, I've got to do the nursery in a certain colour or I've got to buy bedding in a certain colour or the clothes because I just think what's wrong with buying like lovely white, or grey baby grows just doesn't yeah. do you know what I mean so yeah, but people do they you know they they do place a lot of importance on that element and I do think some of that comes from like you say this you know 24 7 society mm. that we live in and and we just we want everything we're impatient yeah, we, are. we want it right now yeah I, I do think that um it can be useful like if you have if you're and then you know, you've had a child and you move on to the next one yeah. sometimes it can be useful to know what what sex baby you're having so you can help to prepare your you know the child you already have so, so there's part of me that when I've been pregnant I, I have thought oh you know shall I find out because because of that reason yeah. but uh, but but I never have but I can definitely yeah. see how that would that would benefit yeah people. yeah but yeah I mean Again, yeah, I, I see the element of, but I mean, you hear people say, oh, because I wanted to know what to get rid of. I wanted to get rid of stuff. And, oh. But then again, for me, I would just, I mean, of course, you know, if you've had like really, really pink stuff and then you do have a boy, you're not going to continue to dress them in the dresses and the, and the tutus. Well, you know, you might do. Might do. <laughs> it's completely up to you, but more likely not to begin yeah. with. Um, so then I do understand that element but when it comes to bigger things like um, yeah decorating the bedroom or whether it's a pink bumbo or a green bumbo or do you know what I mean or um, a pink bath uh, thing or a blue bath thing I just think those sort of things don't matter to me um, but yeah I guess in, with regards to clothes and stuff people do want to be organized don't they so they're like mm -hmm. want to clear out and then so I do get that but yeah, yeah. but but I mean, were you, cause you, so your eldest is a girl. Yeah. Um, and are you a particularly like pink or blue person? Did you like, did you keep a lot of the stuff for the second one, even though you knew you weren't going to find out the sex? Yeah. You didn't so, find out, did you? Well, I didn't find out for any of them. And when I was pregnant with my first, um, she, I, I didn't know whether it was a boy or a girl, but I had this really strong, intense feeling that it was a girl. Like, yeah. So much so that we did pick boys names but it was mainly girls names that we were looking at um, but because I didn't know I had bought all neutral stuff really you know like yeah. like the greys and the whites and the yellows and stuff like that so that could be recycled for my second yeah. baby anyway but yeah I was totally convinced that she was a girl we, when you were pregnant with um, with your first yeah. with Rory did you feel like a strong you sense that yes. he was a boy yeah I did I um 
I really felt strongly that he was a boy to the point that towards the end of my pregnancy, I started to think I really need to change my mindset a little bit because I think I will be, I don't feel like I'll have uh, thought of it as the same baby if it comes out and it's a girl. So I did have to, yeah. I, what I was saying he all the time. And I had my, t my sister had said to me, she was like, you've found out, haven't you? And you've just not told us. And I was like, honestly, I haven't. Um, but then with Huxley, I didn't, I didn't have a feeling either way. It's so weird. Like you, I felt really strongly with my first that it was a boy and he was. And then with Huxley, I really didn't know. I don't, don't know. Did you yeah. have a strong feeling with your second? I didn't have a strong feeling. I sort of assumed that it was going to be a girl because I'd had a girl. You know, when you've had one sort of yeah. gender, you're kind yeah. of, you, don't, you can't imagine having anything else. No. I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be a girl. But I didn't feel as strongly about it. And I really did, in the end, feel quite 50-50. You know, I really just didn't know. Obviously, you don't yeah. know. Um, but when it was my when I was pregnant with my third, you know, like you um, were with Rory, in in my head, I was talking about him and to him as if it was a girl. So I was absolutely uh, so convinced that I was having a girl, despite the fact that I'd already had a girl followed by a boy. Yeah. I, I just was so utterly convinced, and I can I can, when I had him, I can remember my husband saying to me it's a boy and I was so shocked I was so like I can't tell you how shocking that felt to hear <laughs> not in a not in a bad way like I wasn't yeah. I wasn't disappointed and I know some women do struggle with you know yeah. feeling disappointed once they've been expecting a certain sex of baby yeah um, I wasn't disappointed I just found it actually quite funny that I had been so convinced that it was a girl yeah but even months after having him I would be thinking to myself and in my head I would still be saying she and her when I was thinking about him That's, because you just having. conditioned your mind to, that yeah. is so funny isn't it it's so it was so so weird and in fact you know I think I probably still do it a little bit now really? <laughs> which is kind of which goes to show how how convinced I was, he's three, so, you know, that, that's a bit crazy. Oh, we've just had a, a comment on the Facebook page from Cheryl. So Cheryl says, when I was pregnant with my twins, wow, twin mama, having a lot of scans, it was too tempting not to find out their sex. I didn't find out with my first daughter, but it was such a special surprise for my fourth. After yeah. having three girls, we found out at the 20 week scan that we were having a boy. Oh, oh. It was so exciting and special too. Either way, it's amazing. Yeah, he's, that's nice. He's definitely, it, it is amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Um, I, I've, I've got a bit of a question for Cheryl. Yeah. Did she get, Cheryl, did you get um, people saying uh, once you got to your fourth, oh, is it, are you hoping for a boy? Because I think the more kids you have, yeah like the more other people put pressure on you that you're having more kids to hope for the other sex yeah um and yeah there's a parent in my son's school and she's got four boys oh. um under five actually <laughs> yeah mama. yeah the most gorgeous family you've ever seen um <laughs> and she said to me she so i did hypnobirthing with her actually i taught her hypnobirthing last summer and she had said, we know we're having a boy, but we haven't told our family because they're putting so much pressure on us. Oh, no. um, and so we haven't, we've just kept it to ourselves because we can't be bothered with everyone else's kind of, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. You know, which is just, that's just horrible. Because, yeah, people can be quite hurtful. Obviously, they don't. Well, I'm sure they don't mean to be, but yeah, you did no. talk to people saying, oh, I bet you wish you were having a girl or I yeah. bet you wish you were having a boy after you've had like two of the same sex. So that must be really hard to hear. So if Cheryl's still watching, I can't see, um, then that would be great to hear yeah, back from her yeah. about that. I think as well, at the 20 week scan, quite a, we, we now think of it as like a gender scan, really, don't we? But yeah. But really, that's not the purpose of yeah. it. Oh, let me look. Cheryl's just replied all the time. She said, we didn't mind either way, but definitely felt the pressure from others oh, to have a point. 
yeah definitely that is very typical yeah. um but yeah so the, the the actual purpose of the 20 week scan is to you know it, it's an anomaly scan so it's to check exactly okay with the baby that the baby's developing as as they would hope and um yeah. and we've kind of turned it more into uh the moment that we reveal yeah. the baby uh, yeah. you know the baby I, yeah and that does that worries me um not hugely i'm not losing sleep over it but <laughs> you know coming from a, a i would say like a more I try you know natural alternative kind of lifestyle um i am you know i do read up on we don't know yeah. you know the dangers or the you know the long-term effects of all this scanning that we have all of that sort of thing so then i do find it a worry that we are just condition ourselves to uh, consider in the 20 week scan as oh you get to find out that's what you you just get to see the baby yeah. um, it's and it's not just of course it's lovely when you see your baby it's so it's such a special thing um, but that's not why we're really there. We're there to, like you say, it's an anomaly scan to just double check the growth's okay and all of that. You know, there's a medical reason that we that we have them done. Yeah, and obviously yeah. you don't actually have to have scans. You know, you can you can absolutely opt out of it. But again, it is that oh, we get to see our baby and we get to see what you know what the sex. Is. So yeah. you had your scan for your. I did. So residing inside you. That was only a week ago. You had that, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was literally a week ago. It was last Thursday. And um, so how did, how did that go? Yeah, so the, literally, probably until the day before we mm. had the scan, um, I didn't know whether we were going to find out or not. So I'd written a whole blog post on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the, the gender or not, and whether we were going to or not, having not found out two times before. And um, I did get quite a lot of responses actually when I put the question out there from people about people that had found out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we went along and I think I did feel a bit more of a pressure to find out this time, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, and my husband said he would have, you know, he, he would quite like to this time. And I thought, you know what, he's, I got my way last time um and i didn't find out with rory and it would be quite nice for him to experience it the other way and for me you know it's number three so it doesn't really make a difference either way i've had the chance of not finding out two times so we did find out um and we this is a gender reveal. the gender reveal <laughs> and we got this sonographer to write it down on a bit of paper and we gave it to Rory to read out to us so he revealed the gender oh no it's so sweet um yeah because I just felt like I wanted him to be a bit more connected with it as well um and it's another boy three boys <laughs> it is I am programmed to make him football and rugby teams all ones of course um yeah so I think I, I, I was not shocked yeah. um, when he revealed it to us. It was a lovely moment. It was lovely for your yeah. eldest to reveal that. Um, it was a really sweet moment. It was a really, really lovely idea. Yeah. So after, you know, you've had two boys to then find out you're having another boy. Like how, how did that feel, if you don't mind me? No, that's fine. Yeah, so I think I wasn't shocked because like you say, once you've already had one and then I've had another one of the same sex, you kind yeah. of just expect that it will be. And I've read somewhere something about, or been told maybe a long time ago, that once, so if you have your first child, then the next one, it's a 50-50 chance. Yeah. And then if you have the same sex again, it reduces your percentage chance of having a different sex again so the more you have of the same the more likely are you are to have the same well, that's interesting i yeah. don't quote me there's no scientific evidence i can offer you behind that but that's what <laughs> i heard that's what i've been told anyway so um there was an element um of me that felt a little bit like shit this is this is it it's a life of boys 
Aww. because I, I think this is our last one. I mean, Johnny said I have to find someone else if um, <laughs> he said that's it. Like, if you want another one, yeah. I'm not hanging around for it. Um, so, yeah, last, last baby. And so there was an element of, um, of it being final. That's mm -hmm. it. I'm a mum of boys. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my mum's always said to me, she, you know, she says, we, we love, you know, we love our boys. We love the baby, whatever it is. She says, but I would like you to experience that mother daughter relationship. So I think I've got that in my head of, mm. I'm not going to have that. So, but then when I spoke to you earlier, you know, I think it is a little bit from my point of view, maybe it's a bit materialistic in terms of who am I going to go shopping with when she's a teenager and, or like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Cool? am I just going to be like this really frumpy, football mum like that 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 sounds really shallow <laughs> no, it doesn't it, it's totally normal I think to to feel that way and to yeah. have that sort of sense of it I don't want this to sound horrible but to have that sense of disappointment and the, I mean there is a real there is a, a real thing isn't there which is gender disappointment yeah. and I, I don't think you're actually suffering from that but women who are devastated yeah, yeah. When, find out that you know they've been hoping for a girl been doing things like I was reading on the internet um earlier that you know things that people do to ensure that they're going to have a girl might be uh, yeah. eating more yogurt to increase yeah, yeah. their pH levels getting their partners to have hot baths to alter the sperm I mean I don't actually know the science the science behind those strategies but people are willing to do those kind of things yeah so that there must be a real intensity about and a longing you know to have a certain gender and I think when you like you know want when you have your baby and when you see your baby it's that overwhelming feeling of, for most women for that love and connection yeah um, and okay you might not get the shopping and you might not get the mother door today's but they might, you know, they might get married and have, great, you might have great daughter-in-laws, exactly. you know. Exactly, yeah. So I think, it, I, I don't think it was, like you say, what well, definitely wasn't like that, that awful uh, gender disappointment that some people yeah. do feel. Um, but it was, I guess it was coming to terms with, like seeing into the future a little bit and being like, okay, this, this is it. This is what my life's going to be like. And not in a bad way. Like I love having boys. Like mm -hmm. I really do love having boys. Um, mm. and girls and boys, like you hear it all the time, aren't they? They are, especially when they're little, they are different kettles of fish. Like, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to both sides. You know, boys are rough and tumble and they're, they're they punch and they like superheroes and they kick and they like, guns even though I've never had a toy gun in the house they make it out of lego like honestly yeah, where um, did it come from yeah definitely and they fight with each other but then they're friends two seconds afterwards and then you have like the girls which is quite gender stereotypical I'm being here now but generally play by themselves quite nicely some you know do more quiet activities but then yeah. they can be a little bit catty can't they from like younger age so I think you've got the pros and cons of both sides but I have had a friend whose um, partner was really disappointed. Um, I won't name her just in case. I hope she doesn't mind me talking about it on here. Yeah. But he really wanted a boy. He felt really, really strongly that he wanted a boy. Mm. And, um, and they found out yeah. um, the gender. And it was a girl. And he was, it was him. He was really gutted. Yeah. And she was disappointed for him. She mm. felt really upset for him, which kind of, I guess, ruined her experience a little bit. Yeah. So, so much so that she went for another private scan to double, like a 4D one, to double check, is it definitely a girl? Mm. Um, and, you know, we all reassured her that, like you say, Liz, when that baby comes out, you mm. don't care if it's an alien, do you? You're like... <laughs> I mean, you, not everyone has yeah, not everyone has that instant bond. I think that's another subject altogether, isn't it? Um, but you you don't care. You're just like I've given birth. Yeah. I'm amazing. It's like all of a sudden, it's like whatever you have is what you were meant to have, you know. Yeah. And, and that yeah, that's why when when I had my third Jamie and I was convinced it was a girl, 
yeah. when he was a boy, it was just like, well, of course it's a boy. He was always meant to be a boy. You know, it yeah. felt really like as if I would thought it was a girl, yeah. Um, which, yeah, is definitely strange. But I, I think it's, it's for anybody who's watching who maybe is like genuinely really suffering that gender disappointment. And um, like the dad you mentioned, and, and to be honest with you, I, I've taught women who uh, hypnobirthing that have yeah. felt that way. It's really, really hard yeah. thing to, to move past because with that comes the guilt as well, because yeah. you get people saying, oh, well, you know, you're having a healthy baby. What are you moaning about? But yeah. actually, if somebody really put their whole heart and soul into the idea of having a boy or, or having a girl, it's very hard to change your mindset so have you got any tips or anything you could think of that they should do to move past gender disappointment perhaps oh, do you know what that is a really difficult topic because yeah. i really think yeah like you say it's all very well saying mm -hmm. oh yeah at least you've got a healthy baby but you you can't help your own emotions yeah like your own feelings your own feelings and no one can deny anyone Mm -hmm. of their own natural feelings whether mm -hmm. whether the other person thinks that's right or wrong um and i have to i have to say actually i mean it sounds a bit um morbid or a bit miserable but on that day last thursday when i came home and i was a bit quiet and i didn't really know how to express it to my husband um mm -hmm. or talk about it and i didn't know if, i think i just wanted to process it internally actually and just mm -hmm. you know i didn't want to make a big thing out of it um and I came online and I can't remember where I read somewhere. I've might been on a home birth group. A lady had said, just had my 20 week scan and um, having to, you know, terminate the pregnancy because the baby's got really fatal conditions like the trisomy 21 yeah. um, and Edward syndrome and it won't make it. And I just thought, yeah. oh my God, like it makes me want to cry a bit now. Yeah. It just was like, oh my God, like, I am, I am so lucky. I am so lucky. But I know for people that have serious gender disappointment, they're still going to have that, that element there. And all, all I can say is I promise you that when that baby comes out, you really don't care. Yeah. You just don't care. I think it's having, trusting in the, that, that you have the capacity to love yeah. this child no matter what the gender is and no matter um you know no matter whether they have managed to bond during the pregnancy and you know even you know if they don't bond initially at birth yeah. they have the capacity to love that child um and to trust in themselves that they do i think you know accept how they feel as well yeah. don't don't yeah. sort of bury it down kind of no. i mean pos positive yeah positive affirmations I mean, for us as hypnobirthing teachers, I think are a winner in any yeah. situation. So, you know, just thinking up um, some positive affirmations um, that are going to reassure you that you will connect with your baby, that you love your baby no matter what, you know, all of those sort of things. And just repeating them in your head or out loud over and over again, because the more you tell yourself it, the more you feel it, don't you? I mean, I, you know, I don't need to tell you how it works, but for anyone watching, I definitely think positive affirmations for anything are a winner, <laughs> to be honest. Absolutely. I'm all over absolutely love them and would recommend them to, to anyone, definitely. Yeah. So we are coming to the end of our chat. How quickly does it go? It's so quick. That's so we haven't covered half of the things, I think that we thought that we were going to cover. I know, I know. Um, so I've, I've seen that, uh, oh, Cheryl commented um, again, all the extra 3D, 4D scans people are having privately these days is worrying. Yeah. You know, the long-term risk. Yeah, I mean, you sort of touched on that point a little bit earlier, um, you know, when we were talking about how people are sort of treating the 20-week scan as, as, a, as a gender reveal yeah. scan. Um, and, and it's true, we don't know the risks, although, I, I, think, I mean, I was looking on the NHS website earlier when I was researching this topic a little bit, and yeah. it was saying that, um, you know, there are no known risks to the scans, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any risks at all. Yeah, no, because it's unethical to, to test that on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, okay, yeah. so I think we'll... we'll We'll have to finish there because you do have a midwife. I've got a midwife coming any minute, yeah, for an appointment, yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much thank for joining you. me. I've had such a lovely chat with you. Yeah, it was lovely. Um, I hope you have 
a lovely, lovely day. And thanks for the gender reveal. Of, did no. you actually do the gender reveal? Yes, you did. You said it was. I, I think so. You did. You did. You did. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Thanks so much. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.